All right, now we're ready to do that power supply repair job for that Samsung L227 WTQ monitor. Um, first thing we need to do on the power supply is remove the plastic shielding. It's just held in place with a couple of clips. So remove that. Now we need to remove the capacitors. We have one small one here, one in the center, and then the cluster here. This cluster is the ones that are visibly bulging, but while we're doing the board, we're going to go ahead and replace all of the capacitors. It's best to do that uh, so that you don't have to go back in, you know, in a month or so and replace the ones that you didn't get the first time. So to do that, we're going to need to have, of course, your soldering iron. Um, you need to have lead-free solder, desolder wick, some diagonal cutters to cut the capacitor leads when you're finished, and, of course, the capacitor kit uh, with the proper parts to do that repair. Um, that is available from our website, www.ccl-la.com, in our parts store. All right. Um, now, the first thing we're going to need to do is, of course, remove the old capacitors from the board. So to do that, we'll turn the board over, use our soldering iron and the desolder wick. And what you'll do is... You put the solder wick on one of the legs of the capacitor, heat it up with the soldering iron, and the solder is going to melt and be absorbed back up into the wick. You may have to do it a couple of times till you get the hole, the hole cleared and all the solder removed. Then we'll go to the other leg of the capacitor and do the same thing. Now once we have the solder removed, we can just pull the capacitor right off the board. Um, some people do it that way. Uh, another way that you can do it is if you heat the leg of the capacitor, melt the solder, and then tilt the capacitor out and it pulls the leg through the board. Then you can heat the other leg of the capacitor and pull it through. We have the capacitor off. And then once you get the capacitor from the board, then you can go back with the desolder wick and just clean up any remaining solder so that you have a nice clean point to insert the new capacitor into. Both ways do the same. Uh, it's just kind of personal preference as to which way you prefer to remove the capacitors. So we're just going to go through here now and remove the other ones. Now, as you're removing the capacitors from the board, um, you can notate the uh, values of each capacitor that you're removing. Uh, it's going to be written on the side of the old one, and again on the side of the new one when you're reinserting them. In each capacitor location, there's a number, a location number, that usually starts with a C, um, so that you'll know which ones go back in which location. Uh, that information is also available in the step-by-step uh, -step guide on our website. It does have the capacitor locations uh, with which capacitor goes there. I'm just going to clean up the solder here. And we have the little small one. This is the only one left to go.
Okay, now we have nice clean holes to insert our new capacitors into. Okay, for inserting the new capacitors, if you look on the new ones, there's going to be a gray stripe. And on the board, on this particular power supply, on the circle where they go into, there's a negative symbol or a little gray bar on one side of the um, circle. That's the negative side. The negative stripe on the capacitor's lead goes through the hole that's closest to the negative stripe. And then on the back side of the board, you just separate the wires so that it stays in place while we're inserting the rest of them before we get to the soldering. So we're just going to go through and populate the board first. And then we can go back and just do all the soldering at one time. Last one. Okay, now we have all of the capacitors installed on the board. Now we just take our soldering iron and our solder and go back and solder them in place. And to do the soldering, of course, you just take the soldering iron, apply it to the connection, and touch a small amount of solder. The solder is going to melt and flow around the connection point. Um, we do want to make sure that the solder joint is bright and shiny metallic color. If it's kind of a dull grayish, that is what's called a cold solder joint. And you need to go back and hit it with the soldering iron again just to melt it and make sure that it's, when it solidifies, that it is nice and shiny connection. Okay, and then you just take your diagonal cutters, cut off any remaining capacitor leads. And there we have a repaired power supply board. And we'll just put the insulator back on it. Snap that in place. And we'll take it back over to the monitor and plug it in. See how good a job we did.